YouTube shadow banning PewDiePie. The only business model creators are the ones they give a shit about. Markiplier uploaded exactly the same footage, he commentated on it, but he wasn't striked. I guess. So today's video is another one of those videos where I need to call out YouTube. I was actually going to make this video about four or five days ago and then there's just been more and more shit that's kind of added to <laughs> the list of stuff and that I've accumulated. So this video is going to be a little bit longer than my normal call outs. My normal call outs are like, what, three minutes? So what I want to talk about is YouTube pick and choosing when to enforce their policies and who to enforce their policies to. There's been a lot of this over the years. One of the biggest ones recently has been YouTube shadow banning PewDiePie. That's right. One of the biggest fucking creators on the whole of the fucking platform got shadow banned. So if you don't know what shadow banning is, it basically means that if you search PewDiePie, his channel doesn't come up. His content doesn't come up. So one of my favorite YouTube channels, for instance, is Sorted Food, showing my inner fat kid. If you search for them, not only does their channel come up at the top, but just one after the other, after the other, after the other, of their content, of their videos. If you search PewDiePie, when I searched it, I think it was yesterday, his content doesn't come up. There's just a bunch of compilation videos. Can I just say, for somebody who has over a million subscribers, for anyone, that's so fucked up. So fucked up. They didn't even do that when Logan Paul, which I'm gonna come onto this subject in a second anyway, but they didn't even do that when Logan Paul showed a dead body in a fucking video. He didn't show the person's face, but he showed the person's hands. He showed them hanging from a tree. A person who had just committed suicide in a suicide forest in Japan. Let that fucking sink in. They didn't shadow ban someone like him after doing something so fucking despicable and disgusting. But oh no, because he still makes them money, he wasn't shadow banned. The only thing that happened to him is that he was removed from preferential treatment of ads. There's a preferential program for YouTubers who are of a certain size. They get preferential ads as long as they tick certain boxes. And all that means is that those kind of ads generate more money. I'm not a big creator, so I don't know if this is exactly true, but if you see things, for instance, the same ad over and over and over again, it's probably because that ad's being pushed and if that person's on the preferential program, that's making a lot of money for YouTube and it's also making a lot of money for the creator. So the creators don't get to choose what ads appear on their platform. Say for instance, if you see a Domino's ad at the start of so many people's videos, that's because it's on the preferential program and that's making a shitload of money for YouTube. The only consequence he got was he got removed from the preferential program for a specific amount of time and his movie got shelved for like less than 12 months. Speaking of, that's the other thing that frustrates the hell out of me. They are not consistent in any of their policies or any of their rules. As I mentioned, Logan Paul showed a dead body in a video and his film that was due to release, I think a couple of months later or something, I mean, I don't exactly follow <laughs> Logan Paul or his career, but his film got released within about a year of him filming that dead body. And yet PewDiePie, who at the start of 2017 did a Fiverr video, he paid two gentlemen from another country to, I can't remember which country it was, so I don't want to get that wrong. He got them to write a racial slur. I didn't realise it's not a racial slur, it's an anti-Semitic message. So apologies. When I say racial slur, just know I mean anti-Semitic. On a piece of like cardboard or paper or something and dance around and smile. The inconsistency there is the Scare PewDiePie season two, which was like a YouTube rare series that they used to do. Season two was due to come out the month after he posted that video. That season got shelved and I understand why. However, it still is not released. Where's the consistency? Logan Paul films a dead body, it gets released within 12 months. PewDiePie gets someone to write down a racial slur, three years later, it's still not released. Make that make sense. But that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to preferential treatment around creators. It's one of the things that disgusts me because basically if you make a shitload of money for YouTube, they will look the other way. Because one of the other huge issues on this platform are content farms. I didn't know there were so many of these. If you've seen like the compilation videos for five minute crafts, kind of channels like that, um, there's hundreds, I think even thousands of these things. 
And what's worse is the majority of the time they just duplicate content. There's a lady that did a huge video on it and it's so in depth and so interesting. I will link her video below because it is mind boggling how the fuck they get away with this. Literally just, I think, because they make money for YouTube. A lot of money considering the amount of panels that these people have. So what these people do is they will show, for instance, on a thumbnail, they'll, they'll show something on the thumbnail and the compilation won't even have what is in the thumbnail in the video. So not only is that frustrating to the viewer, that thumbnail gets replicated about 20 times because they know it gets clicks. I know what you're thinking, yeah, that's frustrating, but that's not the end of the world. But one of the YouTube policies is not to duplicate content. And that's exactly what these guys do. So in these compilation videos, they will have the exact same videos they've already done on other videos from that exact channel. I'm not talking even about other channels because I guess that could be a loophole. As long as it gets clicks, it gets views and makes money. It's so fucked up. There's so many examples of this bullshit that I'm so frustrated. Because the more I find out about this, the more I just don't want to be a part of this platform that I really, really like. I used to love this platform, making content about makeup, which I love and enjoy and that I can share. I'm disgusted by the way they're treating creators. YouTube used to be individual creators. It's such a big business now that only business model creators are the ones they give a shit about. The next kind of issue that feeds into that is strikes. YouTube are inconsistent with striking creators for their content. So what I mean by that is, take for instance Penguin. I uploaded a video that showed a little skit kind of joke in it which alluded to a kind of car accident or something. I can't remember, it was, it was about a month ago. The video got striked. If you're not aware of what a strike is, your video has been striked because it is not within the terms, conditions and policies of the platform. So for instance, if you showed nudity, you could maybe understand that if it's like a kind of car accident or something and that would be not inside the terms and conditions of what you're allowed to upload. However, Markiplier, who is a huge content creator on YouTube, uploaded exactly the same footage and commentated on it, but he wasn't striked. He literally had to ask YouTube why this content creator, Penguin, was being unfairly striked if his content was okay. And then YouTube turned around and striked his video, which he was completely fine with. But what he wasn't fine with was that it was inconsistent and unfair to strike one creator and not the other simply because one's fucking smaller than the other one is. And this happens a lot to commentary channels. Def Noodles, who I actually really like, he's really funny, he's been demonetized at least four times in about a week. When you get auto demonetized, it's because a bot has determined that your content is outside the checkboxes that you've confirmed that you have no swearing, it has no violence, it has none of this, it has none of that. And a bot has said, no, it has whatever in it. So if you don't agree with the bot, you can ask for a manual review. So what a manual review is, is someone, an actual person, sitting down and looking at the video and determining if the bot was correct. And even though it's actually coming up on his videos that he's showing things of war, I can't remember the other two, some really violent kind of stuff, there's nothing like that in the videos. He's being unfairly treated and I don't know for what fucking reason. And this isn't just him. Other commentary creators are treated exactly the same. And the reason I suspect is because YouTube doesn't want commentary creators because they call out and hold their big creators like Logan Paul, like Tana Mojo, to accountability. And it makes YouTube look fucking bad. No, these are the people that are filming dead bodies or going out in the global pandemic and partying. It's even possible that YouTube is protecting a known predator on their platform. Do you remember this video? The one where I called out YouTube for not removing Minilad from the platform? There was another creator who has had their video removed talking about Minilad and all his known 
and admitted doings. The way YouTube try to get around this is because they call it bullying. Not that I guarantee anyone who's watching this video be aware of even who the fuck Alfie Days is, but Alfie Days is a is the boyfriend of Zoella, who's also a huge YouTuber. She used to be one of the biggest English vloggers. So Alfie Days, her boyfriend, who's also a vlogger, did an interview with Susan? I'm pretty sure it was Susan. There's a Susan and then there's a Linda, and I always get confused. When he did his interview, he made sure to ask regarding commentary channels, because he believed it was bullying. I was bullied for a long time when I was a teenager. This is not fucking bullying. This is holding people accountable for the bullshit they do. Like, when Zoella sells a £50 calendar of £1 toot, which probably cost around a fiver, 50 fucking quid, that's the kind of accountability people are talking about. When people are going out and partying in their hundreds without a mask, in a global fucking pandemic, because they don't give a shit, because they're probably immune, that's the shit that people are getting frustrated with. That's the stuff that people need to be held accountable for. But apparently, they're too good for that. Because they have a shitload of money, so they're not like the rest of us. Well, I hate to fucking break it to you, but yes, you are. If someone was being unreasonable, if they were, you know, literally hating on the person, then I would understand that would be more considered bullying than accountability. But the majority of these people are just saying, this is what this pe person's doing. I do not agree with it. I don't think these people are necessarily horrible. I just think they're a bit dense. So the last thing, I'm so sorry this video is probably so long. The last thing that I find super just frustrating, like this is just a clear frustration. This is nothing like the shadow banning and all that kind of stuff. What annoys the hell out of me is that when you are on a video, you're scrolling through the comments and ad goes on you now get shoved out of the comment section and you can only get back to the comment section by exiting this ad and then go back into the comment section. Like, why does that box now appear? If I wanted to go into the thing, it used to have just like a, there used to be a clickable thing. Now you literally get shoved out of the comment section and it's so frustrating for someone who loves just reading through the comments while I'm watching video, but interested in other people's opinions or sometimes they are the most hilarious comments on a video. Some of them are chef's kiss. All in all, YouTube just need to fix their platform. They need to look at themselves and realize that eventually someone's gonna create another platform similar to YouTube that's gonna think about the creators more than the big business. People are gonna leave. People like PewDiePie are probably gonna end up leaving because why the fuck would they stay when you treat them like this? If YouTube were more consistent in their policies, if they treated everyone the same, no one would be so frustrated. But they don't. And how fucking dare they shadow ban people? Someone searches for your channel and they can't even find it. If YouTube do not do not want someone on their platform, maybe they should just re remove them if it's that bad. But tell me what the fuck PewDiePie did or anyone that's been shadow banned has done. If it's a predator, for instance, like Minilad, which, by the way, hasn't been shadow banned, make that make fucking sense. If he's not been shadow banned as a predator, what has PewDiePie done? And this is not a, oh, you're just, you know, loving on PewDiePie. I don't even watch that much of his channel. His kind of news videos can be kind of funny, but the majority of time I don't watch him. I just think it's really fucked up. People need to be treated fairly. The policies need to be consistent against all creators. That's all we're asking for. With that, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys and I hope to see you all soon. Have a good day.